everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, So Little Time, and my name is Karen. So today's vlog then is all about my April makes. And I just want to apologise for how late this video is in coming to you. I've been trying to get it uploaded for a while now. I did try and film it one night and the lighting was awful, so I just didn't get it done. Um, and we are already like midway through May, so this is really late. So I am not going to be bringing a May plans video to you for that reason, because we're already halfway through. But there is one project in particular that I am looking to make up. So I'll go through that with you um, in this video a bit later on. So I had a productive April, so I did manage to get quite a lot made. I didn't manage to get all of the things done that I said in my um, April plans video, but I've got seven items to show you today. So I think I had quite a successful month overall, especially as um, we had a Easter in April. So um, we had a bit of a break with the children being off school for two weeks. So yeah, quite productive. I've spent, I think the lighter nights have actually really helped with that because obviously you can, I can sit there and sew in, in daylight uh, for, you know, a lot longer than I was before. So I shall get straight stuck into what I've made then. Um, so I'll just grab the first item because it's not for myself. Okay, so the first item I've made is the Tilly and the Buttons Cleo dress. And that's for my friend who lives a few doors down from me. So I haven't given it to her yet because she's away at the moment. Um, and I've basically made it up in the size that I, I usually make for myself. Um, so if you are interested in seeing a video on how I grade my pattern for this Clio dress, I'd quite happily put that up. Um, it is really, really simple how I've drafted the pattern to fit my body shape. And I think my, my friend, she's got a similar body shape to me. So she actually tried my dress on before I made it up. So I didn't even have to take her measurements really for this. Um, Anyway, she's given me the fabric um, and it's a charcoal grey, um, I think it's a special, it's um, a Gianni Versace fabric and it's a, it says on the salvage here because I've included that, a super 150s wool and cashmere blend um, and it's lovely, absolutely gorgeous quality. Um, but it was a little bit too lightweight to um, use for this pattern, so I've lined it. And if you watched a previous vlog of mine, you will have seen that the lining I got was actually green rather than grey. Um, so you can see the lining here, that's the green. And I used the salvage of the fabric of the dress, um, to put onto the bottom of the dress, sorry, to act as a facing. So where I usually bias bind my um, hems, I've actually used this as a facing, so I just literally cut it on the on the straight grain, um, and then I've just attached it that way. Um, and I'll show you because I just wanted to include this detail, which says the name of the fabric and who it's by. So I just thought that was a really nice touch. So that's on the inside of the garment um, at the bottom, and it just adds that little bit of weight um, to the dress at the bottom. So when you're sitting in it. It doesn't flip up, so I, I do find that sometimes when you have a, a hem that just flips up. Um, and I've just top stitched it with some mustard thread, not a top stitching thread, just a standard mustard thread. And I've done that around the edges and just around the front pocket. Now I haven't put the back pockets on or the front hip pockets on. I've just kept it, kept it really simple. Um, and again, I've used the prim snaps, um, dungaree snaps and I got these ones from Guthrie and Garney and I actually will be contacting them because this one keeps flipping it just won't grip at all so it's faulty and like I've said in my previous videos I've, I've had problems with these clips before from Prim they've, they've got gone really downhill in my opinion and um, these ones that I'm wearing on mine are really good they're really stiff um, but these are one of the first obviously batch that I bought ages and ages ago so why they've gone downhill I don't know if they've used using a different manufacturer I don't know but I'm going to be contacting them <laughs> about it um, and the reason I did go for those rather than normal dungaree kind of sliders is because these fit the width of the strap um, so I just wanted to keep that in keeping with the strap and I thought they look they do look nice but I've pinned it at the top at the moment for her because I'm going to have to that stops these from sliding around because um this fabric is quite lightweight, so it doesn't grip as well. Um, so I've bias bound the facing on the inside and I've used a mustard one, which I just picked up off eBay. It was only two pounds for five meters. So I'll link that down below if anybody's interested in purchasing off there. 
When it arrived though, it, it was folded very narrowly. So I actually unfolded it, ironed the bias binding flat and then put it through my bias binding maker machine thing just to get the fold right. So um, it was sitting sort of at the right width for me to attach it. Um, yeah, but really pleased with how this dress has turned out. Um, and I will insert a picture of me wearing it because I did try it on um, just so I could see that it, it was okay because I've not seen her for her to try it on yet. So she, um, she should be really happy with it. She's seen it on a, on a photo um, and hopefully it will fit her okay. So I've just got to, I've pinned the side. I've just got to sew the, the facing down just to keep it in place. Yep, so that's that one. So that's the first make that I did. Um, so nearly completed for her. And I'll talk to her about those um, dungaree snaps because obviously I might have to get a replacement one for that one. So I shall go and get changed then into the first make that I've made for myself. Okay, so the first thing I've made is the toaster sweater and this is version two. I've made version one before, so this time I wanted to make version two and I've used um, a stripy loop back jersey, I think this is, um, yes, from Guthrie and Garney and this was in their remnant bin and I think there was about one and a half metres in there, so not quite enough for me to do the full sleeve, so I've had to make an adjustment and do three quarter length sleeves, but this fabric is absolutely beautiful, it's really drapey. Um, and really soft as well and I've worn it a few times and it's not bobbled as yet so that um, is quite nice. So I'll stand back so you can see it in its full glory but um, you'll see that this version has a sort of, yeah so it's got like a self-faced kind of neck, I'm not sure what you call it but um, yeah it just sort of, you just it's all in one so you don't have to attach, <coughs> excuse me, attach it. Um, and I sized down on this particular um, version. Now the one I made before, I made the size medium um, because that is quite, it comes in quite a bit, whereas this is on the picture, it's a lot more sort of roomy. So I decided to, to size down to the size small and I'm so glad I did because otherwise it would have been way too big for me because just the shoulders, they sit just right for me. Um, and also I've lengthened this as well by two inches in the body. Um, so I'll stand back so you can see it properly. So you'll see it's a lot shorter at the front still, and then it's got this sort of high-low hem, um, which looks really nice. And at first, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a little bit um, sort of too baggy for my silhouette, because I'm usually used to wearing things that are a lot more fitted and I was going to use this fabric to make another cocoa top but I'm glad I didn't and I'm glad I went with this because it's nice to have something a little bit different in my wardrobe and it's really comfortable and I think it looks really nice with jeans and I always wear like a vest top underneath anyway so I will do that and I think if I made one in a different colour maybe like a mustard have that popping out at the bottom I think that would look really nice so I am really pleased with this actually overall so that's a, that's a thumbs up for the toaster sweater version two then. Okay, on to my next mate, so I'll just come back in a second, go and get changed again. Okay, the next one I've made is the Cocoa Top by Tilling the Buttons, and I've used a scuba fabric this time for this one, and this came from, I think it was Fabworks Mill, yeah, um, which I bought, I think, near on two years ago now, and I haven't had a chance to get around to using it, um, and I bought two metres, I think it was really wide, because I've managed to get the top and the dress out of it. Um, but this time I've done the full length sleeve for the dress, uh, for the top, and three quarter length sleeves for the dress. So I'll pop that on next. Um, now this fabric is was really really easy to sew with. Um, I hadn't sewn with scuba before, and it went through the sewing machine absolutely fine. But I did just use a zigzag stitch for the neckline and for the sleeve cuffs, just because I didn't want to. Um, have any issues with skip stitches with the twin needle um, and to be honest I don't mind the effect of the zigzag sometimes on this top um, and on the bottom of the, the hem as well so it um, it fits beautifully I've done my standard size three and um, I don't lengthen the top version at all so um, this is just the standard length that comes as a size three and it fits fine 
this one I did on my sewing machine, um, so I haven't finished any of the edges of the seam allowances. Um, so I'll stand back so you can see. So just standard cocoa top. So I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Um, I'm happy with the placement of the flowers on the shoulder, actually, I quite like that. I've just got this big, bold one here. And I didn't um, sort of check out where I was putting the, the pattern pieces on the fabric either. I just popped it on and, and worked that out. I just had trouble <laughs> finding out which was the right, uh, right way up. Um, so the flowers are all pointing in different directions. So I wasn't really sure if they were supposed to be up or down or or whatever so I think I think my dress version the flowers are in the opposite direction so we'll see when I try that on but yes so this is the standard cocoa um, and really pleased with that I think it looked nice for going out when I go out for an evening meal or something like that now I'll pop the um, the cocoa dress on then and this one I'm not 100% sure whether I like it or not and that is purely because of the fit and I'll discuss that when I pop it on so back in a moment okay so the dress version is then three quarter length sleeves um, and again, I've just zigzagged around the neckline and everything. With this one, um, I usually use sort of standard stay tape that you can buy from um, normal haberdashery shops and things. Just It's like a woven tape, very narrow, and I usually use that to um, stabilise the neckline. But with this one, I used an iron-on one, and it is really, really... Um, I don't know, really stiff, um, so it feels a lot tighter around my neck. Um, so I don't know if it doesn't, if maybe the other one's cut on the bias, I'm not really sure, but yeah, that's something I've not used before. Um, and this dress I made up on my new overlocker, um, which I bought from Crafty So-and-So in Leicester. I took advantage of the fact I had 15% uh, discount off, which was in the Dressmakers Ball goodie bag. Um, so I wanted to get that sort of used up because it didn't have a date of when I needed to use it by um, and I was obviously planning on buying an overlocker for my birthday so I thought well I'll just bite the bullet and buy one now while I've got this chance to, to save some money so I bought one that was slightly more expensive because I had that 15% off and it's in the background there if you can see so I will show you that um, a bit later. So I'll stand back and show you this because I'm not 100% sure if I'm happy with the fit on this. It's a standard size 3 I have lengthened it by an inch at the length and shorten lines. Now I usually, um, I think my last one, my stripy one, my blue and white stripy one, I lengthened that by two inches, which I find is fine for wearing with tights and things like that. Um, but obviously where you lengthen it at the short and lengthen lines, it does mean that that narrower section of the dress is extended. And um, because I'm quite hippy, I find that it was a bit more clingy. And that's happened with this one. Um, my previous Coco dresses have actually been the standard length and I have found them quite short so I think in future what I need to do is to lengthen just the hem rather than lengthen it at the length and shorten lines because that sort of sits just right where it starts to skim over my hips and because I've now lengthened it it's a bit more clingy around my hips and this scuba fabric doesn't have as much give as a standard sort of pontaroma so I think that's why it's clinging to be a bit more and it's making me feel a little bit self-conscious so I'll show you um, and see what you think. So, it's just clinging here, if you can see, getting a line there. Um, so it's obviously tighter on my hips, whereas usually, I suppose, the pattern, if I took that inch out, you'd get that more A-line, and it would just give me a little bit more give there um, around my tummy area. So when I put it down, it just clings that little bit around there, and it, it just, yeah, it makes me feel a little bit self-conscious. Um, but I do really like the dress um, itself and I think obviously with marathon training I'm going to be losing a little bit of weight so hopefully um, it might fit me so we'll see but I will definitely wear it on an evening out because that's the purpose that I made it for and I really really like this fabric um, so yeah we'll see how I get on with it but if I'm not happy then I might just cut it into another top because the top is you know it's fine I'll have to see um yeah so anyway on to my next make so I'll be back in a moment okay so my next make then is the Colette Manetta dress and I made a size um small with this one and the fabric is from Satisfaction, and I got it uh, as a prize 
as a part of the One Week One Pattern Challenge that took place last November, I think it was. Um, and I just won a spot prize and, and got two metres of this gorgeous fabric. Um, it's a lot, lot more um, stable than the Minetta dress requires, um, but I've had absolutely no problem with the sizing. So I've made the size small and I've done my usual adjustments, which is basically to use a 5 8 7 inch seam allowance um, throughout, apart from the waistline where I've used 3 8 of an inch, and I've added a neck band. And to do that, all I used was the um, pattern piece from the Tilling the Buttons Agnes top, but I did a calculation from measuring the neckline. So you measure your neckline, and I t uh, basically did 70% plus 10 centimetres of the measurement of the neckline and that always works out perfectly for me. Um, initially on this dress I just did 70% and I put the neck band on and I wore it for a day and it was really tight and it brought the shoulders in um, because it was pulling in and it just didn't feel very comfortable at all and it was actually standing out a little bit because it was so tight so I actually had to unpick that and redo it. So I will always go with 70% plus 10 centimetres for my neck bands on everything and that's even on my Agnes tops as well. Um, so I've done the three quarter length sleeves and I've twin needled around the neckline and all of the other hems and that looks really nice. Um, I did lengthen the bodice section by one inch just at the bottom. I didn't do it at the length and shorten lines, I just did it at the bottom um, just to add a little bit because I knew this didn't have as much downward stretch um, as the pattern calls for. So I didn't want the waist to be sitting really, really high like I've had that problem on another um, Minetta dress that I've made. But I absolutely love this fabric. I love this dress. Um, it's so bright and vibrant and just makes me smile. Um, and the fabric is a loop back jersey again, I think it is. Um, just really, really good quality and the colours haven't washed out. So it's I've worn it quite a few times. It's been in and out of the wash. So I'll sand back so you can see. One thing I will say about this dress is that when I put the skirt on to gather it, it really worked well this time. Um, and I think that was because this time I'd used a 10 millimeter width clear elastic. And it was just a little bit more stable than a clear elastic that I'd used on my previous one. Um, I think that was a lot thinner. I think it was only like five millimeters. So I found stitching that really, really difficult. So this one, it just held its where I was pulling it, it was just staying in place while I was zigzagging over it. Um, and I just used the instructions in the, um, in the booklet for the Minetta. So I didn't follow a, a tutorial or anything like that, whereas I had done, I think, on my previous one. But it worked out fine. Yeah, and just the gathers are just really even all the way around. And it's just really comfortable where it sits on my waist. It doesn't ride up or down, you know, it's just, just right. So I'm so pleased with this make. Um, so I'll pop on my next one, and that's the uh, Blackwood Cardigan by Helen's Closet in my mustard jersey that I got from Guthrie and Garney, and I absolutely love this make. So I'll pop it on because it goes really well with this dress. Back in a moment. Okay, so here it is, the Blackwood cardigan then, and it's, um, I'm not quite sure what jersey it is from Guthrie and Garney, but it's just got the right amount of stretch, and I think this has actually turned out to be my favourite Blackwood so far. I've got three, the blue um, and whitish kind of one, that fabric was from Guthrie and Garney, and that's quite lightweight, so it feels a lot bigger on me, and my pink one, which I got the fabric from Crafty So-and-So in Leicester, um, that feels quite tight because it's a tighter weave, but this just has the right amount of drape and stretch, I find, for this particular um, pattern. And I've done my usual adjustments for this pattern as well, and that's to take two inches off the hem band and the neck band just to have it slightly shorter because I just feel that that sits at the right sort of level for me. Um, so I'll stand back so you can see it all. So it just goes lovely with this dress, and I think it just sits at the right sort of level on there um, yeah really really nice and I just had to do used a stretch stitch to um, do the top stitching down between the the neck band and the, and the actual cardigan section because a zigzag it just wouldn't go for some reason even though I was using the um, the walking foot um, yeah so I just think it goes really well with this dress and with this particular cardigan I've used my new overlocker so you can see all the edges have been overlocked. It just came standardly threaded in white thread so that's what I've used um, so I haven't even threaded it myself yet because it came already threaded. Um, 
yeah, so really pleased with how, how that turned out and I was getting quite used to it by that point. So everything, it fits perfectly just like my others. So really, really happy with this one, yeah. And I just love this outfit together. Like I say, it just makes me feel really happy and confident and just fits really nicely. So it just doesn't make me feel rubbish about myself, you know, as you do sometimes. Um, so on to my final make then. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so my final make then is the Ogden Cami by True Bias. And I've made it in this gorgeous viscose fabric that I got from the Frugal Fabric Shop. Um, and if you've not heard of them before, I'll link their details in the description box below. Uh, the lady, I can't remember her name, she's also on Instagram as well. So um, it's got this diagonal kind of flower print going across it um, with pinks, greens and yellows. Um, so it's really nice and summery. And I've made for this version a size four and I've lengthened the bodice, I think by about two inches, but I will just confirm that across the bottom of the screen for you. So I'll stand back so you can see um, kind of where it falls on me. So it kind of comes to high hip area. Um, now it might go with my Blackwood cardigan, I'm not really sure, I've not tried it on yet, but otherwise I don't know whether maybe it might be a bit too, too much mustard together, I'm not sure, I'll have to try it on together. Um, I usually just wear it with jeans, so I think in, a, in the future I'm going to have to make like a skirt or something to go with these Ogden camis because obviously jeans in the summer probably be a bit hot sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'll have to think about that. Maybe the Camden skirt or something. Um, I've seen quite a few nice ones of those on Instagram recently. Um, okay, so just want to say um, then I have not got really any sort of solid May plans really. Um, just one item that I really want to get done. Um, and that is on a time limit anyway. And I've actually become part of the Minerva Crafts Blogger Network team. And they've gifted me some fabric, which I've chosen um, in return for a blog post. So I've chosen this um, cotton pop poplin fabric. And it's this strawberry print uh, with a grey background and white little spots. And I've, I've asked for three metres of this, um, and the reason being I didn't want to come up short like I do sometimes, you know, when I've only used two metres or, or whatever for a dress. Um, and the dress pattern that I've chosen is the Colette Peony. So it's this one here, um, and I think it's got some little gathers at the waist, and there's some darts and, and bits in the bodice. And it has a long sleeve version and a short sleeve version. And it comes with like a cummerbund style belt, I think that's how you say it, uh, which is a detachable and on some of the blog posts that I've read they haven't they've omitted that belt completely and um, but I will probably go ahead and make that for the blog purpose and um, now I have read that the this dress comes up with fit issues so I'm going to see how I go I'm going to make a toile of it which I've already cut out ready to go see how I get on with the fit of it and um, if it's not suitable then I'm going to change the pattern for the blog and I'm going to go ahead with the Tilly and the Buttons Lilu dress because that's a dress that I'd really like to make and I think that would look really nice in that fabric. Um, but it would be nice if I could get this one to work for me. So we'll, we'll see how I go. Um, and then I just wanted to quickly show you my new overlocker then that I got from Crafty So-and-So. And they offer, as well as part of um, purchasing this from them, a service where you can go in and they can sort of give you a demonstration on how to use it and, and sit you down and get you to thread it up and that kind of thing so I am going to take them up on that because I think because this came pre-threaded I've not threaded it myself so when I have to do that I might come up a little bit stumped on it I'm not sure um, so the version I've got is a brother machine um, and it's a brother 3034 DWT lock um, and so this one is a slightly more deluxe model to the one ahead of it, which I think they've also got on their website at Crafty So and So. This one um, has got a little uh, bin section, so the cut off pieces of fabric just go directly into there. And it also comes with another table that you can extend onto this. And that I find would be really helpful if you've got like a bigger project, so you've got more area to put your project on, so that um, if, especially if you're using maybe a heavy jersey, it won't stretch over. Um, yeah, and I've gotten on really well with using that so far. I basically just read the manual really quickly and then just got straight stuck into having a go on it. Um, and then I, I've only used it on two of my garments and that's my cocoa dress and the Blackwood cardigan. Um, yeah, and I didn't have any issues with it. It's, it's, it's absolutely done fine. So I just um, 
had a practice on a few bits of fabric first before I actually got stuck into one on, on a garment obviously I didn't want to go wrong because initially I wasn't really sure because obviously on your sewing machines you'll find that you've got your um, seam allowance gauges on the plate and you just put your fabric on top of it whereas for me I was a little bit confused um, because obviously with the one of these I don't know if you can see I'm trying to hold it up um, but they're here and they're just like little lines so I know which is which now because it actually says in the um, in the manual um, that obviously you butt your fabric up to that rather than on top of it um, <laughs> And because it obviously cuts the fabric away, but initially I was a bit like, well, why can't I put it on the top? Yes, yeah, so I was a little bit confused about that because I've not used one ever before um, or even been in contact with one. I hadn't even looked at one in a shop. So, yeah, I just went ahead with that one. Um, I actually contacted Sarah and Freya at uh, Crafty So and So and just asked their advice on on message via Instagram, um, and they were very helpful. So I should be going into their shop soon to to get a bit more sort of learning about that. Um, Okay, so in a previous vlog, I did mention that I would be doing a giveaway when I reach a thousand subscribers. And I think I'm about 45 shy of you at the moment. So it would be much appreciated if you are somebody who comes back and watches my videos on a regular basis and you're not subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button down below um, so you can be part of this giveaway. Um, so I've got some really nice prizes that I'm gonna be bringing to you. And I'm hoping that I can have it open worldwide. So, you know, postage won't be an issue. Um, so if, if you could just subscribe, that would be amazing. And I really look forward to, to telling you what you need to do to be part of the giveaway then. Um, and that's it really. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. Thanks for sticking with me. And as I know, it's been quite a long one. Um, and I shall see you soon then. Thanks a lot. Bye.